Hi everybody, Chef Lisa here in the Riccio Group Test Kitchen. I'm here today with the Medea G1 High Speed Oven and I'd like to talk to you about its benefits and features and we're going to do a little bit of cooking along the way. First of all, looking at the exterior of this unit, you can see that it has a very appealing design and a small footprint. It features an 8 inch high definition touch screen that scrolls and has very large easy to read icons. This oven is fully ventless which means it can sit anywhere in a food service operation, no special venting required. The interior of the oven can accommodate a 12 inch pizza and it comes equipped with uh, a special technology called dual impingement technology. So that's 3000 watts of dual impinged air hitting your product in conjunction with 2000 watts of microwave power. This lends for fantastic crisping and browning uh, of your product in a very short period of time. Very fast throughput with this oven. You can see it also features a light inside at, for easy viewing while you're taking your product in and out or cleaning the unit itself. Some of the accessories that are available with the unit include the pizza stone. I have my pizza stone in the oven here because I'll be cooking a pizza later, so it's perfectly fine to keep the pizza stone in there while I'm cooking other items. I also uh, have available a perforated Teflon basket. This is perfect for um, when you want to get that perfect browning and toasting around a sandwich. So we're going to do a sandwich in this later, but that perforation allows that impinged air to circulate around your product and give you the optimum uh, crisping and browning. We also have a solid Teflon mat and this is great for chicken wings or any product that doesn't require that extra permeation of air around it. A lot of people ask if metal can be used in these ovens. Um, you can use an oven. I have a quarter size sheet pan here uh, with a low profile side, so I'd say nothing higher than this profile here, but the um, metal can be used in this oven for cooking. So in a bit, we're going to be making some shrimp and I'm doing the shrimp in the metal uh, pan so you'll be able to see what the results are like using the metal pan. It comes with a paddle and this is for safely uh, removing and inserting your product into the oven. It has a guard here to protect the operator's hand so as you can see when I drop the door down and I'm moving product in and out my hand is protected from burning itself, uh, burning it on the door. So that's a great uh, safety feature with the paddle. So those are the accessories that come with the oven. What I really like about this oven is it comes preloaded with about a thousand or a thousand plus already uh, preset cooking parameters or recipes as I like to call them. But not in all instances does the oven have what I'm looking for. So it also has the capability to allow me to program my own cooking parameters based on my product and the desired results that I want. So I have here some shrimp. This is uh, 1620 black tiger shrimp that are raw and they're deveined and peeled. I've just left the tails on. These marinated in a piri piri marinade. So they're going to be quite spicy. And again, I have six of them on a little piece of parchment paper to make for easy cleaning. And it's on this uh, quarter size sheet pan with the low profile sides. So I don't have a recipe or a cooking parameter pre-programmed, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I go into this little chef hat here and it's going to bring up a template for a recipe. So I hope you can see this. If, if you can't, that's okay. We can discuss it later. Um, but I have an option here to add an eye, a picture to the icon so it's easy, easily recognizable to the operator. So this is shrimp. I scroll through, I found my shrimp picture and there it is, it pops up right here in the corner. Now I can input the recipe name. So this is Piri Piri Shrimp. I'm just gonna go Piri Shrimp. So very easy to type that in. Then I'm going to move over to the temperature. So my oven is preheated at 498 degrees. So I'm also going to put the temperature parameter at around 500 degrees, or 498, I guess I could go 499, somewhere around there. Once I've established the temperature, I can go to 
the cooking stages. So here I have an option of up to six cooking stages. Now shrimp is a very delicate product, so I just want to be sure that I cook this as quickly as possible, but still delicately so that the end result is tender, shrimp, juicy, and not dried out or overcooked. So in my first stage, I'm gonna do this in two stages. In my first stage, I'm going to set the cooking time at 45 seconds. So 45 seconds, I can just slide the little uh, time cursor over to 45 seconds. Very easy to do. My microwave power, I'm gonna do at 50%. Because again, I don't wanna be too aggressive, it's shrimp. So I've got that at 50%, my fan power also at 50%. And that's my first stage completed. When I'm ready to go to my second stage, I just hit the back button and it brings me back to the template. In my second stage, I'm going to add 20 seconds of cooking time for my second stage. And this is really a finishing stage. What I want to achieve here is just finishing off the cooking. Uh, I'm lowering my microwave power down to 30% and my fan, fan power my impinged error, I'm going to put it 100%. And that's because I just want to get that little bit of color, that little bit of uh, browning on the shrimp, but again, being gentle enough that I'm, I'm going to have a juicy product at the end and not overcooked or dried out. So now that I've established all of my cooking parameters, I've named my recipe, and I have uh, also established the temperature that I'm going to cook at, I have a choice whether I want to save this or actually test the product. So if I were to save it, it gives me the option of filing that into a uh, predetermined folder, such as appetizers, or it could be a specific dining period. I can customize this any way I want so that I have all of my recipes where I need them to be. In this case, because let's just say I've never tried this before and I want to make sure that this recipe is going to work, I am going to press start, and this will prompt me to insert the shrimp into the oven and press the start button. So you can see here it's counting down from a minute and five seconds. So in one minute and five seconds, I'm going to have perfectly cooked shrimp that's hot, that's ready to be plated and sent out uh, to your customer. So that's like a one minute and five second turnaround for or throughput for your appetizer. So this is where the paddle comes in handy. Once this uh, countdown is done, I'll need this to remove it safely from the oven and you'll see what the final product is. This unit is fantastic for, let's say, a busy restaurant that has, uh, you know, uh, very high volume and they need to take some pressure off of the kitchen. Uh, they can get somebody, a sous chef or whatever, to, to handle execution of all of the appetizers out of this unit. And that frees up pressure and, and time off of the kitchen staff to deal with the entrees and more of the finesse uh, work. So we're just into the last few seconds of our countdown here with the Piri Piri shrimp. And so once the unit is finished, and you may not be able to hear this because of we're recording this, but there is a chime and I can hear that this is done and it's asking me to take the food out. Let me just get my hot pad over here. So you can see here the shrimp are fully cooked but still juicy, plump, not overcooked whatsoever. Let's see if I can hold one up with a tong here. So you can see. Beautiful and just the right amount of doneness. So my customer is very happy when they see this on their plate in no time at all. I'm just gonna go back here. Now, I liked my results, so I'll show you how I save it. I say save, I wanna put that under appetizers. I select the appetizer category and it says it's added it successfully. So I'm just going to go back. And when I click on this little thing, that's my menu. So that's showing me all of my icons of all of, all of my products that I have programmed into the unit. I can go to category, which is I like to work out of categories. If I, if I were a, a restaurant owner or operator, 
I would probably have these set up as dining periods, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then maybe subcategories like appetizers, uh, sandwiches, things like that. So the next thing on our list we're going to make is a flatbread pizza. So I'm going to click on pizza. I've already predetermined my parameters for my, my pizza. I have my pizza made. Bear with me here. So here you can see uh, I've made this pizza using a store-bought flatbread. You could use a raw dough if you wanted, but this is a, just a store-bought flatbread. I've used a um, roasted red pepper pesto, some uh, crumbled feta cheese, fresh mozzarella, and the little vegetables you see on this pizza I roasted earlier today in this oven as well. So I'm going to um, press the button, load my food, this is my pizza, right onto my pizza stone and press start. So you'll start to see as we cycle through all of these appetizers that, you know, it's pretty quick. We did shrimp in a minute and five seconds. This is taking a minute and 10 seconds. You know, in no time you could be pumping out enough appetizers to get the return on your investment in a matter of months, maybe even weeks. The other thing I like about this oven, like I mentioned earlier, is it's ventless. So you can put this in a servery, you can move this outside of the kitchen. Uh, let's say you have a golf course, halfway house. This is a perfect, uh, very easy to operate oven for anybody that isn't skilled. I mean, it doesn't require a chef or anybody with any special training. Um, it's just put the pre-prepared food in, press the button, take it out when it tells you, plate it, serve it. Like, it's fantastic. As it is ventless, there are um, filters in the back. These are washable filters, so you don't have to worry about a, a consumable at all. You just remove the filter from the back um, and wash it and then replace it. So that makes it for very, you know, very easy maintenance and very easy cleaning. So my pizza's done. Let's have a look. So you can see here, I'm just going to pinch that, have a beautiful, lots of wonderful browning on the pizza. My cheese is bubbling, and my crust is crisp and brown on the bottom. So that's ready to cut and plate and serve uh, as an appetizer pizza, flatbread. So the next item I'd like to show you are nachos. So here's an order of nachos. Let's say this is probably your standard uh, appetizer portion. I've done it in two layers, so I have cheese in the middle as well as cheese in, on the top and peppers. And this is a 30 second bake on this. So I'm going to go into my appetizer. I have uh, my nachos under my appetizer. I would consider this a large nacho, so I'm going to press that. I'm putting the food in. And I'm starting it. So 30 seconds, I'm going to have a beautiful order of piping hot nachos ready to serve with some guacamole salsa. And uh, there you go, 30 seconds. You gotta love it. So after the nachos, we're gonna do uh, chicken wings. So chicken wings are um, something that a lot of restaurants, because they take so long to cook, will par fry them and have them, uh, you know, ha almost all the way done before serving. So today I have, just gonna pull these out show you these. So here we go. We have our nachos, beautifully, cheese melting. Use your tongs, Lisa, you don't have Teflon fingers. So you see the cheese is melted all the way through, and you got some beautiful browning on the nachos, crisping, very perfect order of nachos. So earlier I showed you the, tef the solid Teflon basket. I have six chicken wings. 
here. I'm going to uh, spread them out a little bit. They're frozen, fully cooked. And like I mentioned, a lot of restaurants will get, you know, have, they uh, are doing that, not necessarily uh, making your wings from fresh. But here we go. We're going to do a pound of frozen chicken wings. I'm pressing that. That, again, is in my appetizer file. Inserting them in the oven. And starting. So that's a four-minute cook time. So four minutes, that gives the operator some time to set up plates, get the next item ready to go. Some things are quick, like the shrimp. Some things are quick, like pieces of fish or salmon. But items that are denser, frozen, they're going to take a little bit longer. And that's OK. That, again, frees up time for the operator to get set up with the, with the next orders or so we're just counting down our last 20 seconds on these uh, chicken wings that we're cooking from frozen, fully cooked from frozen. And you're going to see that they're crisp and ready to be tossed in your customer's favorite sauce. So I'm gonna grab my paddle, just down to last couple seconds. Look at that. So you can see here, beautiful, crisp. I wish you were here to taste these. Crisp and delicious. Fully cooked and again, ready to be tossed in your customer's favorite juice, uh, sauce. So next I wanna show you toasting a sandwich because if you have already pre-prepared sandwiches at your cafe or in your halfway house or restaurant. This is very, very wonderful. So I'm going to my categories. I'm going under sandwiches. And I have a sub here with cheese. Might be around eight inches. I've created it kind of open face style with assorted meats and cheeses. I'll pop that in. And this is 50 seconds, and I'll have a beautifully toasted sandwich ready to serve to my customer. And I mean, it could take less or more than 50 seconds, depending on the type of bread that you're using. Um, it just, again, it takes some experimenting and, and playing around with the uh, cooking parameters when you have, you know, a specific type of bread or a specific result that you're looking for. The other great thing I've done in this oven is a lot of breakfast items. I can cook raw eggs, such as um, the filling for a toasted western sandwich. I have cooked uh, omelets and frittatas. So that's something for another video, but I would really love to show you those. And uh, I've done French toast. Beautiful brioche bread um, came out, I think under a minute, uh, an order of French toast, very beautifully done in this oven. So that's our toasted sandwich finished. Let's have a look. tongs here so you can see the cheese is bubbling and it's melted so just pop a little arugula or something in there and you have a beautiful toasted sandwich ready to serve doesn't look very impressive I would put some arugula in there but let me cut that in half real quick I'll show you the inside So there you go. Melted cheese, warmed meats, really, really nice. Yeah, very nice. So I hope you enjoy the demo today. Again, the Medea G1 is a high speed microwave oven with convection. It's an actually micro, it's a convection oven with microwave assist. Um, this oven will give any operator fast throughput with sandwiches. Uh, breakfast items, even some baked goods work really well in here, cinnamon buns and things like that. Um, and of course, you saw even higher level uh, items such as shrimp work very well in this oven. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You know where to find me if you have any questions. I'm happy to help answer any questions, give you pricing, assist you in any way that I can. Have a super day.